Okay, we're at the Maker Space today and we're going to check out this Russian power supply once more. Make sure that all of the pins on the back of it are outputting the print voltage as per the schematic. And then we're actually going to try to put it all back together and turn it on. This is a fancy Veriplus Model 105 power transformer. We can convert our 120 and 60 to 220 and 50. So let's see how this will go. Well, it certainly powered it on. It's using, it had a big power spike there at the beginning, which is kind of interesting. I mean, now it's only using a quarter of an amp. And? Well, you know, we got our network lights and then a uh, BKL out there is basically powered on. It's funny because they've got five little test pins here, but then only four labels, which is kind of ridiculous. What am I supposed to do? First, I want to measure the case just to see if that has any hot potential going on to it for my safety. Okay, good. The case does, in fact, seem to be properly grounded. <laughs> I've got the schematic up here on my laptop right now. We got a big connector in the middle with 15 pins, and you can see 5A, 6A, 7A, 8A. We're all supposed to have the 5 volts, and then down there, 3B through 7B is ground, and then various signals over there on uh, that side, and then down here, you got some plus 5, plus 12, and ground for the floppy disk controller, and then a little bit lower than that, you got your input power supply to 220 volts. So, as I understand it, floppy disk power big 15 pin guy and 220 volt line. So let's take some readings from all this and see how well we do. So first off, let me put this on diode mode and as you can see, put these two things together, it makes a beep. Now, when I put this ground to the case, mm, it kind of wonders about that a little bit, huh? I can also leverage this ground out here, I believe, as we look at this to be, yeah, that's five volts right there. In any event, let's try some voltages and look at uh, 12 volts. It's supposed to be on 5A. So as we count up, this is the A side. One, two, three, four, five. 5A. Yep, according to schematic, should be 12 volts, and now it's showing 12 volts. And all these should be 5 volts. 6A is 5, 7A, 8A, 5 as well. Now if we go to the B side, 3 through 7 should all be ground. 3, nice and groundy looking. Not much of a difference between there, nor here, nor here. Now just to show you the AC ripple that might be going on in all this stuff, we got five showing no AC ripple at all, even in the 5 volt line. Absolutely impressive. No visible AC ripple. Yeah, not from this power supply. So as we can tell, pretty well built it seems like. Well, I mean, it has to be well built. It's chugging along like a train. Oh yeah. <laughs> in 4A, we got negative 12 volts. There it's showing negative 12. Um, and then 3A and 2A, I'm not sure what those are, as it looks like it's showing um, AIP and then ASP as well. So, I think somebody on Vintage Computer Form explained to me what those are. That might be externally generated signals, it don't really matter. But, uh, in any event, I'll test them anyway and see what they're doing. 3A, 5.2 volts. 2A also showing 5.2 volts. 1A, which is reading just a little bit, like 0.1 volts. I don't know what that says. It looks like it says 0 SM. <laughs> Hard well, to tell. And also, when you see things that say like 5.2 or 5.3 on the multimeter, that's totally fine because remember, we're going to have a little bit of a voltage drop just across the boards. And some computers are kind of sensitive to having at the very minimum 5 volts rather than something around 5 volts. Yeah, so, sometimes you got certain varieties of logic chips that you absolutely need a 4.95 to 5.05 volts DC. So I think a little 0.3 voltage drop would be. Expected it once we actually plug in all the boards in and get this guy up and running. But let's check the last two remaining ones real fast. The 2B signal is, it's like IIDOST, which is reading close to five, a little bit lower. And then the 1B signal is uh, KPRT, about 600 of a volt. The 1A is in fact reading plus five. Our wonderful ripple, by the way, just so you can tell on 1A, is showing basically nothing that the multimeter can pick up. 
And now this is an RMS multimeter, so you're not going to see quite as many fluctuations, but it will tell you if there's, on average, any kind of AC fluctuation that you should be worried about. Mm -hmm. Only this one pin over here, 1A, is showing about you know, less than a tenth of a volt in ripple current, so that's pretty good. 2A is 12 volts, 1B, ground line, 2B is also going to be a ground. And then just for curiosity, here's the others, they're not really showing anything significant either, which is good. Um, let's stop and do an experiment. Let's see what the voltage is on these uh, the fins for the heat sinks. Huh? We got some large heat sinks out here, and we got some transistors out in the middle of them. Okay, it's a little something, but not much. Totally within the tolerance of ground. Mm -hmm. These are well grounded. Let's check this big old power resistor up here, I guess. Uh, I mm. would make sure that the power resistor is connected to ground on one side. <laughs> yeah, okay, we'll save that for later. Though. Yeah. Uh, uh, you know, big resistors, me scary. <laughs> <laughs> mm. Let's check this and this, also showing nothing, so that's cool. Um, now I'll go to AC, look for the 220. So here's 4A. I don't know why it's showing 100 rather than 200. 3B, showing about 115, 116. 1A is the ground, I guess. I'm not sure why that one is saying. And then let's see what the DC is on these guys. The DC in about a volt of. Eh, it's rapidly decreasing now, it must be some. It's a fluctuation, yeah. Yeah. I don't know why these guys are sad. They're basically showing like the American wall voltage rather than the 220 I got this stepped up to. Hmm. Okay. And let's actually try seeing if it works with 60 hertz rather than 50 hertz. All right. All right, so it's a really simple change to get this thing working at 60 rather than 50. So all I have to do is hit this wonderful button right here to switch it to 60 hertz mode. And then once I turn the output button on, then the power supply should light back up. Ha! Huh, fan seems to be running a little faster, huh? Yeah. It's a different frequency. Well, it is a brushless. Mm hmm. Wait, suppose I should... It's probably direct. Suppose I should leave it like this or cut it? Test it. Test okay. it. See it. So, I don't think it'll... I reasonably... It shouldn't make a difference it for the signal standpoint. Difference. We'll start with the ground, and then we'll go to this guy. Five volts is still showing what it was, basically. 12 mm -hmm. volts, 12.34, good. Minus 12, showing minus yeah. 12, perfect. And this guy's really kind of just floating around. Okay. Yeah, this is just a switching power supply, so I couldn't imagine that, mm -hmm. uh, unless we're dealing with something way far older than this, I would expect. Yeah. Would we ever have an issue with it? The only thing that you may run into is the fan, <laughs> but right. that seems to be clocking just fine. Mm -hmm. Cause we got it's some grid rectifiers in here and some diodes and as such, you'd imagine that uh, this would be able to rectify any of that stuff fine and not care about the frequency. Right. Okay, and just for kicks, we're going to try that power resistor out here. We got it grounded um, and got the multimeter right there. And we're going to try hitting a few of these lines here. Okay, it's rapidly diminishing, 7 volts down to 5, 4. So, basically it looks like this resistor is kind of in charge of bleeding off all the extra power that exists in this thing, so if you accidentally touch a capacitor later, you won't just totally shock yourself. Or die. One of those things. Right. <laughs> yeah, this thing's taking the heat for you. Okay, cool. Well, we're about to put this thing back together and actually try to light it up. Okay, cool. I think we're ready to go with this. We got our 220 set up. I put it back to 50 hertz just for the heck of it. And I've got to do the output enable here and I can flip the glorious switch and see what happens. Now let me know if there's any uh, current overrun that happens. Okay, so output. And uh, shoot it up and now we're going to do this. All right, presto. There's one last thing I forgot to do actually plug in the data cable for the screen. <laughs> that might be kind of important. So. Um. Yeah, I was. I knew I was missing a cable in here, but I didn't quite know where the heck it went to. I didn't realize these things are actually, had locks on them to help you go the right direction. That's really smart. Hopefully I forgot about such niceties, but. 
Luckily. Apparently not so. Is. Yeah. That should give us the video signal we need to actually try turning this on. So let's hit output reset again down there on the box and let's actually turn this guy on. And fingers crossed, God willing, get a video signal. Oh, we got a dot. <laughs> oh yeah, we have got the... Uh, it's faint. <laughs> yeah, it's um, try to turn this stuff up a little bit. There we go. See that better? Yep. Okay, cool. Well, let's think about it. Man, sure making a loud noise, huh? Um, let me see. Of course, this keyboard's like in totally it's not QWERTY at all, so I'm gonna have to really hunt here. Oh, uh, and I, it makes me so mad. There's one thing that I hate. There is no stabilization on the keys. They're just circles that these are sit upon. So the only thing that's holding them straight is against other keys. So no key is actually straight. I hope you can see that. It drives me up the wall. There's no, <laughs> there's nothing straight on this entire key. Like computer, nothing is just perfectly the way it should be. <laughs> Drives me crazy. Yeah, I don't really know what any of these keys do. And um, okay, I can pick, type. type in numbers, but okay, plus error, interesting. Evo, you should have learned Russian. I guess so, huh? Okay, how do I enter? They really should have put labels on this. These are completely blank keys. Um, all right, eight. This is Russian computer, Stevo. Oh, that just kicked me back to the top. I think maybe you should spend some time off camera figuring out what's supposed to go next. There's a space key. <laughs> yeah. uh, we can always edit, I guess, huh? Hmm. Oh man, the smell. Yeah, it's quite smelly, isn't it? Yeah. It smells like tobacco combined with old people. It's like in a little bit, of, just a touch, just a touch of potato, like stale potato. <laughs> oh it's God. in that smell. <laughs> Might I add, I do believe that this is a buckling spring keyboard at that. It has all the feels of buckling spring. <laughs> But it makes me so mad because nothing is straight. <laughs> Everything is bowed or just not fitted properly. Yeah. SM fault instruction. Weird. Okay, well, I guess I should have brought the documentation that would have told me to enter. Um, yeah. Okay. Well, another day, yes. another time. Well, folks, now you've seen the procedure involved with testing the DVK-3 and ensuring its proper suitability for operation. Now, stay tuned for further videos on what all we can do with the system, plus our regular features on retro computers, home consoles, and arcade machines. Bye, y'all!